I have two meter sticks here. On each meter stick, I have attached two 200 gram weights. On this one, the two 200 gram weights are attached at two centimeters and 98 centimeter markings. So they are 48 centimeters, 48 centimeters from the 50 centimeter marking. For that one, the two 200 grams are at 40, 42 centimeter and 58 centimeter markings. So eight centimeters and eight centimeters from the midpoint. They have the same mass, so it would require the same force to accelerate them linearly at the same rate. If I move them linearly or translationally like this or like that, they would feel the same. What if I try to rotate them like this? Do you think they would feel the same? Or would one feel heavier than the other? By heavier, in this case, I mean more difficult to accelerate angularly. If one feels heavier, which one do you think feels so? When I rotate it like this, the rotational axis is here, through the middle, and is perpendicular to the meter stick. The rotational inertia of a point mass is mr squared, where r is the distance between the mass and the rotational axis. So the farther away the mass is from the axis, the bigger the rotational inertia. Therefore, this one feels heavier to rotate than that one. I mean, it takes more torque to rotate to accelerate angularly for this one than it takes for that one. If I pretend that the meter sticks are much lighter than the 200 gram weights, find the rotational inertia or moment of inertia for each of these when rotated in such a way. Let's look at A first. We can treat each of these 200 gram weights as a point mass. So there are two point masses in this system. When we want to find the total mass of the system, we would add the masses together to get the total. It's the same way for rotational inertia. If we want the total rotational inertia of a system, we can just add up the rotational inertia of each mass in the system. The total I for this combination is the rotational inertia of this 200 grams plus the rotational inertia for that 200 grams. The rotational inertia of a point mass is mr squared, so this will be the mr squared. For that 200 grams, the mass is 200 grams, which means the standard unit is kilograms, so it's 0.2 kilograms. r is the distance between the point mass and the axis, so it is 0.48 meters. And then for the other one, it's also mr squared. The mass is also 0.2 kilograms. The r is 0.48 meters. And this gives us 0 0.0922. And what's the unit? Since the i is the mass times the distance squared, so this must be kilograms times the meters squared and it doesn't have a special name so it's just kilograms meters squared for unit. Now we do the same thing for B. There are also two pieces of point mass. This time each piece of point mass is 0.08 meters from the axis. So the I is mr squared 0.2 times 0.08 squared. Since both of these give us the same amount of rotational inertia, we just have to multiply this by 2, and we get 0.00256 kilograms meters squared. And this happens to be 36 times of that. Because for both cases, I equals to mr squared for one piece of point mass, and then times 2 because there are two of these in each system. So 
They both have two pieces point mass, each one giving the same mR squared, and each m is also the same. So the i is proportional to r squared. This one has an r that's 0.48 meters. This one, the r is 0.08 meters, which means this one is one sixth that. If r changes by a factor of one sixth, after you square this, you can see the i is only one over 36. So the ratio of i is 1 to 1 over 36, or 36 to 1. When I rotate them in such a way, yes, this one does feel much heavier, but not really as much as 36 times heavier than that one. Why not? because the meter sticks have mass too. So they also contribute to the weights meter stick combinations rotational inertia. The 200 gram weights being farther away from the axis causes the rotational inertia to be 36 times that of the part contributed by the 200 grams weights alone. But the meter stick part of the rotational inertia is the same for both. That's why this one requires a lot more torque to provide the same angular acceleration as the other, but not as much as 36 times. Now, what if I rotate them like this? Please compare their rotational inertia. When rotated in such a way, the rotational axis is along the meter stick. So the r, the distance between the 200 gram weights and the axis are the same for both. Therefore, they have the same rotational inertia. They feel the same when rotated in such a way. I will take these to school for my students to try. But if you want to try the field at home, but you don't have something to provide a similar setup, perhaps you can find a yardstick, broomstick, or a broom. And try these. Accelerate it translationally by holding on to different parts of the broom and move it in different directions. Since the mass is the same, they would all feel the same. Then try rotating this way and that. In which case do you think the broom has a larger rotational inertia? This one has the larger rotational inertia. When rotated in such a way, the axis is right here, perpendicular to the broomstick. This part of the mass is far away from the axis. But when I hold it here, the mass is closer to the axis. If the mass distribution is closer to the axis, the r is smaller, the rotational inertia is smaller. What about rotating like this? versus uh, like that. In which case do you think the broom has a larger rotational inertia? They are the same, because in both cases, uh, the axis is along the broomstick. So this and that feel the same. 